semi-final basketball matchups. The six o'clock game will feature the Queensboro Community College Tigers taking on the Hostos Community College Caymans. Ladies and gentlemen, for the Tigers, the head coach is Robert Holford Jr. Assistant coaches are Damian Broadwater, David Vanderbeer, Cedric Pitt, Eric Brooks, Damson Jackson, and Derek Adams. The assistants are Jamal Steele, Stephen Jones, Herman Crump, and Adrian Allman. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, let's meet the starting lineup for the Queensboro Community College Tigers. Starting at the forward position, a freshman standing six foot five from Queens, New York, number 25, Jordan Chateau. At the forward position, a junior freshman standing six foot four from Queens, New York, number 32, Chucks Abunse. At the guard position, a freshman standing six foot two from Long Island, Number 33, John Peloso. At the guard position, a freshman standing six feet tall from New York City, number 12, Joseph Turner. And at the guard position, a sophomore standing five foot ten from Queens, New York, number two, Carl Benjamin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Queensboro. Community College Tigers. And their opponents, the Hostos Community College Caymans. The head coach is Dr. Jody King. Assistant coaches are Everett Kelly, Daryl Jones, Tom Hellmeyer, Jonathan Quintero, the strength and conditioning coach, Darren Wilson. Standing six foot one from Brooklyn, New York, number four, Chris Van Buren. At the forward position of freshman, standing six foot four from Brooklyn, New York, number fifteen, Tyree Mai. At the guard position, a sophomore standing six foot two from Queens, number one, Chad Coachman. At the forward position, a sophomore standing six foot five from Brooklyn, New York, number two, Tyler Washington. And at the guard position, a sophomore standing six foot one from the Bronx, New York, number ten, Maverick Hodge. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hostos Community College Caymans. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, both teams will meet at center court for the traditional handshake of sportsmanship. Good luck, gentlemen. The Queensboro Tigers taking on the Hostos Caymans. The winner goes to the CUNY Championship game. This is David Russell along with Joe Massey, and this is the third meeting of the year between the Tigers and the Caymans. The Caymans dominated the Tigers in the first two meetings. Can they do it again? They held Queensboro to 42 and 45 points in their two meetings. Can Hostos really expect to do that for a third time, Joe Massey? Well, there's an old saying, David, it's hard to beat a team three times in one year, but we'll make an exception in this case because Hostos is the better ball club by a few, a few uh, percentage points yes. in the standings. We'll say this, though. This will be a good game for the young Tigers to continue to learn Robert Holford's way of playing basketball because they'll come out tonight, they'll throw everything out there in an attempt to stay in this game. And if they're able to do it, what, what do they have to lose? I think a quick start's gonna be important. Each time against Hostos, they scored 19 points in the first half. And now Coach Holford is starting four freshmen. He has going for him. Joseph Turner, Jordan Chateau, Chuck Sabunse, John Peloso, and the one sophomore, Carl Benjamin. Dr. Jody King, the CUNY Coach of the Year, is starting Chad Coachman, Tyler Washington, Chris Van Buren, Maverick Hodge, and Tyree White. Queensboro win the Road Blues, Hostos in the White. Jody King has a lot of experience. 
you and I can't forget when he did come into the Queensboro Auditorium to face the Tigers and he was going to face Coach Holford. And we said, does this mean anything to you that you're playing against one of the great coaches in Hostos history? He said, nope just means that I have to win another game and I try to pay attention to what I'm doing. And he, he's a likable young man. Yes, and he went out and won that game by 38 as Queensboro wins the opening tip here. Opening and Joseph tip Turner with the ball for Queensboro. Turner, they're looking to get into a good offensive rhythm early. Peloso, pass was tipped and that's not what a good offensive rhythm looks like. Hostos with the ball trying to score the first points of the game. And Hostos, uh, led by that kid coachman we were talking about, has had a very good year. But watch number 10, who sets the tone on the offense, Maverick Hodge. And here's Hodge with the ball. Good ball movement, and the three-pointer is good. Chad Coachman from downtown, and it's 3 nothing Hostos. Coachman. Last time they hit the Tigers with several players and that is their strength. They are collectively a real tough group. Last time these teams met, Hostos was up 24-5 in a hurry. Queensboro never led in that game. Abunse down low is doubled, tripled. Loose ball and that will be a tie up. The ball goes to Hostos on the alternating possession. Officials call a jump ball. Jump ball will go over to Hostos in the home white, they being the higher seed, Queensboro in the traveling blue. We haven't had a chance, or I haven't, had a chance to see them in those colors for a while, because <laughs> we do a lot of the home yeah. games, of course. I like the dark blue jerseys, too. Very dark. Uh, they've come in on this court here at BMCC in the past and done damage, but uh, they're playing a good team here tonight. Very good team, top, top seed. Here's Coachman with the ball again. Van Buren being guarded by Turner. Van Buren makes his move outside now and traveling is called. They'll be traveling on Tyler Washington and the ball goes to QCC. By the way, we saw another Washington earlier here in the uh, building, uh, Taekwon Washington. And Taekwon Washington, former Queensboro player, also a former Kingsboro player, plans on playing for Tom Green and CCNY in the fall. Is that what he plans on doing? Yes. Uh, they and can that, use him. Uh, Queensboro could use him right now after that pass. A lot of people can use him. He's <laughs> he a very talented young man yes. and very likable also. Uh, was all smiles uh, saying hello to us. I guess we talked him up good on the game, David. That's yeah. what it was. I think he would be all smiles when we sound like his agent. <laughs> Here's Hodge with the ball. And now Coachman being guarded by Peloso in front of the Queensboro bench. Van Buren. Hodge being guarded by Benjamin. They're down to 15 on the clock. Hodge. Nice pass inside. Tyree White throws up a wild one and it's no good. Abunse with it for Queensboro. And traveling is called on Turner. And I think Certainly Turner may be going to the bench. You know, I always have questions about those calls because it's a question of whether the player rushed up and gave him enough room to stop with the ball and he stepped around him to try to avoid a collision. So uh, I don't know if that was a traveling, really. Hostos looking to extend the lead. It's Hodge. Of course, I'm looking for Queensboro to get a call there that they would need. Van Buren, Van Buren, the long jumper, is no good. And Chateau pulls it in. Queensboro looking to cut into the lead or even tie it. And a foul is called away from the ball. I think it's on number two. Tyler Washington. Tyler Washington. Tyler reached in there. He's trying to get a hold of uh, Abunse down low. And here's Chris Aubrey inbounding, or at least trying to. They're in danger of a five-second violation. They just get it in. Chateau back to Aubrey, and Aubrey misses the jumper, and that was a makeable shot. Aubrey, one of the Tigers with some offensive talent. They get him in the game to try to get something started. And another traveling on Hosto. Too many steps taken by Tyler Washington. Queensboro ball down three nothing, nearly three minutes in. Queensboro playing good defense, and that's what they want to yes. do against the Hostos club more than anything else. Because yes. if you can stay in the game, you can find a way to win the game. <laughs> now about Hostos' defense, they haven't given up a point yet. Here's Aubrey. Hostos makes everything so difficult to work for as Aubrey's doubled in the corner, loose ball. Brown goes on the floor for it, and that'll be a tie-up. 
that was a rugby scrum more than a tie-up. Oh, he is. I was talking to Dr. Jody King before the game. I was mentioning that the game we did, they were up by 35 with three minutes to go, and one of his players shot an air ball, and Caleb Yusuf flies in to save it in, and they end up getting another two points. And he was just saying they go all out all the time. And you see them on the floor for every loose ball. It's the reason they went 8-0 and this year in yeah, CUNY. Yeah, that's part of being a winning team for sure. Hostos ball. Still no points for Queensboro. Three minutes and 15 seconds in. And here's Maverick Hodge calling out the play. Hodge being guarded by Aubrey. Jeremiah Brown with it. He gave Queensboro nightmares in last year's CUNY semifinal with 20 first half points. Good looking athlete. If you get him the ball in good spots, he can do some things. There's a quick turn. And I'll say this for Queensboro. They are massing up on whoever is down there low. They're not letting them have the easier baskets that they had last time so far. Certainly not. And Aubrey got the hand in. And then a few bigs were around. So. Hostos gets it on the alternating possession, 14 on the shot clock. There's the old, uh, there's the old uh, argument, can you teach a team to be better defensively? Sure you can. Mm -hmm. you know, just hustle, get in position. White underneath the coachman, no good. And Queensboro ball. And here's Aubrey running, Peloso, spin move, and a charge is called. Good call by the ref, charge on Peloso. Yeah, Peloso was flying through that lane, tried to make the quick spin. Unfortunately, he picked up some traffic down the way, knocked over the Hostos player, and you're going to get called in that situation. Only the first team fell on the Tigers. And it's on Peloso. One fell on Tyler Washington for Hostos, and Peloso goes to the bench now as Dwayne Brighty, number 15, is in for the Tigers. And here's Hodge with it for Hostos. Brown fake the shot. And here's Hodge outside. Now backs up. Brown. They look a little tentative on offense right now. Brown. They're down to eight on the shot clock. And here's Washington. White is fouled on the way up. And Chateau puts his hands on his head in disbelief. And uh, they're going to give that ball uh, to. Uh, they're going to give that ball at the line to the uh, to the mover in the lane to go to the free throw line. But again, Queensboro being very aggressive, not letting anything come free under there. That time they were able to uh, stop Tyree White, but by holding him a bit, he'll go to the free throw line. White hits the first, it's four nothing, and Queensboro has to make sure their bigs like Chateau and Abunse don't get into foul trouble. That's what they must do tonight. Uh, they have a lot of people they can take off that bench who have a bit of size, so. Uh, but not with the ability of a Bunce uh, or Chateau. Five nothing Hostos. And they put on some pressure. And then Chateau handling the ball. And now he gets it to Aubrey. Aubrey gets it back to Chateau. Bridie. Queensboro still looking for their first points. Bridie. Great defense by Brown. Benjamin, nice pass down low. Abunse puts it in off glass. Yeah, great pass by Benjamin. He uh, got into the top of the key area and waited for Abunse to get himself underneath. It was kind of like a, a big body that you see in college basketball. You like to get him that ball down in that space. 5-2 host. host. Here's Coachman again. It's no good. Tipped. Tyler Washington gets it back for the Caymans. Shot clock didn't reset, but nobody noticed. Shot's no good. Chateau couldn't pull it down. Now Aubrey picks it up and he's on the run. Aubrey to Bridie, pull up three. It's no good. Ugly shot in transition and here's Chad Coachman coming back the other way. Coachman pull up jumper and they're really settling for shots as that hits the support. And it goes up and over and it'll be Queensboro ball. Right there, Robert Holford saw they missed the shot. It wasn't a bad shot, could have tied the game. But he immediately was screaming, back, let's get back. That is the number one chore tonight. Well, Queensboro, two points in the first five minutes and 25 seconds, and they're only down by three. And here's Aubrey with the ball. Queensboro can tie the game. Aubrey being guarded by Maverick Hodge. Bridie guarded by Jeremiah Brown. Bridie outside, three-pointer is good. Three. Troy Singleton from downtown, and we're tied at five. Troy Singleton. 
Yeah, for a moment there, that looked like vintage Queensboro basketball, the way they ran that play. It's 5-5. There's Most, many moments will go by in this game. <laughs> Ostos looking to take back the lead. Nice back to our play, and the shot is blocked, but they call a Bunce for a foul. Foul charge number 32, Chucks a Bunce. Chucks a Bunce. It's Chucks, by the way, not Chuck with an S at the end. They came very close to making a clean block on that, but got a piece of the Hostos player who go to the line. Yeah, and he certainly got a piece of the ball as Coachman's first free throw was good. 6-5 Caymans. Coachman now with four points. You can see why Coachman is such a good player on this team. He's one of the players has an ability to make his own shot, get in the lane, stay outside, take it on the wing. He was all CUNY first team, averaging about 16 points per game, and he hits 35% from downtown, and he makes both free throws, and Hostos goes up 7-5. He's one of those guys, you call him a team bell ringer. You know, he, he starts to chime in, and then things start to work. There's Aubrey being guarded by Hodge, and then he gets past Hodge. And, and Hodge that, committed the foul. Yeah. That was charged to number 10 of the Cayman's Everett Hodge. That's his first. Good call by David. He said he got past Hodge, and then Hodge's first reaction was, let's grab his shirt a little or something. And by then it was too late. Only the second team fell on the Caymans. Of course, if you're Tom Heinsohn, you used to get away with those kind of things. <laughs> Especially in Boston. Yes. Aubrey and bounding. It's McFarland down low. And McFarland ties the game at seven. Andre They're making a good account for themselves so far. Oh yeah. Maybe, you hate to say, but maybe Hostos took them a little lightly after you win by an average of 37 points per game. A glass, no good, tipped. Tipped again, Queensboro ball, and they can take the lead for the first time tonight. Aubrey up ahead to Bridie. Bridie. And Singleton was, had his hands up asking for Screaming it. Screaming for the ball over there. Not loudly enough. Aubrey guarded by Brown. And here's McFarlane. Aubrey back to McFarlane. McFarlane, it's good. Queensboro goes up 9-7. I'm telling you, McFarlane has made himself a factor in that lane. That's back-to-back -back shots for McFarlane. Hodge. Hostos looking to tie or take the lead. Hodge being guarded by Singleton. Jeremiah Brown. And here's Coachman, a tough shot, and it's no good. Rebounded by Abunse. McFarlane a little Leo Asonye looking. Yes. A little bit. And Singleton is called for a charge. Remember Leo here, he was an outstanding player, the brother of the CUNY player of the year twice in the senior colleges. Marcel, Marcel Lasonye, who played over on the other side of Queens. And now, and now Leo plays at Farmingdale State. And Leo, uh, according to Sean Couch, who we did some games with, yeah. he said he has the footwork to be a, a, an even better player. And uh, obviously that uh, has started to take shape. Ostos keeps it, 33 on the shot clock, 12.20 to go in the first half with QCC leading 9-7. Timeout, and Queensboro has done a very good job in the early going against the top, the top guys. You know, you come into this tournament year after year though, and you watch the top guys, and they have a lot of pressure on them to play up to snuff, up to what they're billed as. Uh, so far, it's been an even game in every respect. How about the Caymans last game? They were, they lost to Rockland in a game they led by eight points with 132 to go, and then completely fell apart. Yeah, they, this is a Cayman team that not only is top gun in the CUNY, but what were they uh, playing for a number three spot. I think they could be the number two seed in Region 15. And they lost a very tough game that they could have had in the win column the other night and uh, down the stretch. And maybe maybe they're feeling some of the effects of that loss. You know, when you, when you play a whole season, you have to keep things in perspective. These are still young men. These are only freshmen and sophomore. 
on the community college level. You're not working with any juniors and seniors. Hostos is 21 and four this year, and two of their losses have come to Sullivan County, both by single digits. I would have to say, David, even tonight, they're just too good to lose in this tournament at this point. You never know, you just never know. There aren't surprises. Yes. Remember, Gomer Pyle used to say that all the time. Surprise, surprise. And that's what you want to do. You want to surprise them tonight. It's going to take a lot of doing. Let's watch it from here, though. 12.20 to go in the first half, and Queensboro's been in this game. And that's where they want to be. They want to be in this I game. They're more than just in this game. or hanging around. They're leading 9-7. Yeah. Nine, yeah. Here's Hostos trying to tie or take the lead with Maverick Hodge handling the point guard duties. Troy Singleton up on him. Hodge. Great defense by Singleton. And they call a five second violation. Ball to Queensboro. And uh, I stated they want to be in this game. You said they're ahead in this game. That is true. But from a standpoint of working this program to being a viable winning program, they would like to make a good account for themselves tonight. Win or lose. You just, you want to show Hostos, hey, we can play ball. And it's something Robert Holford showed Queensboro when he was at Hostos. First year losing the CUNY title game to Queensboro, the last time the Tigers won a CUNY championship. Yeah, yeah. And here's Bridie being guarded by Brown. Nice move by Bridie, the long jumper is not as nice. And Brown with the rebound. I remember talking to Holford after that game, and it was tough for him to stand around the tournament the rest of the time. Yeah. He didn't like it. He didn't like it at all. And the fellas called on Singleton, who didn't believe it, and that's, just, that's gonna be foul number two on Troy Singleton. You know, if you're gonna lose, that is the second on Singleton, and they have to be careful picking up those fouls, as you said. If you're gonna lose, losing to Tom Sinekson is no embarrassment. Uh, that was a great Queensboro coach right there. He had a great run with the Tigers. Certainly, and not a bad lawyer either. <laughs> And here's a Nuss. Remember, he was uh, Anthony Mason's lawyer, former Nick of the 90s. There's an alley oop attempt. Brown had it blocked by a Boonse. I knew there was something I liked about Tom because I always got along with Anthony, too. <laughs> Pull up jumper is no good. Aubrey may have rushed that one. And then a whistle. And it's going to be a foul against Queensboro, unnecessary. And there's a second foul on a big Abunse, which they have to stay away from, and he's 80 feet away from the basket and commits a foul. They might have to remove him right now, and they're going to. Uh, you you got to protect him. You have to have him in the game later. That's yeah, I was, for sure. I was going to say, I don't think they have to think about pulling him. They have to. There's no doubt about it. They bring in a big guy to take his place. Yeah, and they're staying... With the usual lineup, they're not going small by adding another guard. It's Coachman misses. And Queensboro's running, looking to extend the lead. It's Aubrey. Aubrey, kick out. Three-pointer is no good. Hostos with the long rebound. It's Coachman with the spin move. Coachman to the basket. The floater is good, and the game is tied at nine. It's a much different game than the last one we saw between these two clubs yeah, at Queensboro. Definitely. And Coachman with seven of the nine points for the Caymans. Pass down low, it trickles out of bounds and it stays with the Tigers. David, to see the ball movement there by Queensboro, that was something they were not able to do in their last encounter. They just reversed that ball so quickly, they almost had an inside shot. But a good play by uh, Hostos, get back on it. And here's Bridie with 18 on the shot clock. Brighty to the basket, and he couldn't put it in off glass. Came in ball with 10.23 remaining. All right, we're talking very nicely about the Tigers, and that was Brian Denal who came in the game, number 44, trying to throw his weight around down there. Couldn't get to the loose ball. Question is, can they maintain this intensity throughout? It's not going to be easy. No, no loan. Here's Coachman. As Hostos may have gotten away with the charge, or an illegal screen, I should say. Here's Arthur Lowe, the coachman. Coachman being guarded by Ojugbuli. Coachman's jumper, no good. And Queensboro comes away with it. Rashad Hendricks got a hand on it for Hostos, but he couldn't haul in the rebound. 
Queensboro looking to take back the lead. It's 9-9, 9.50 to go. Very defensive first 10 minutes. And here's Aubrey. Don't get defensive now. <laughs> oh, Doug Lee is fouled. Yeah, I like what they're doing. I like what they're doing. Rotation is nice. The ball movement is nice. They have a place to go with the ball. And uh, Akjabelli has come in. Uh, 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 how do you say it again? I say Ojugbali. All right, let's say I, say, uh, I said Akjabelli, but let's say Ojugbali. He has come in. He has fit right into the scheme of things. This is the first one. Is this the same Tiger team we saw two and a half weeks ago? Well, they have practice. <laughs> and they have Coach Holford every day in practice. And uh, things change. And he makes that known. And he teaches. You yes. know, he teaches them how to play the game the right way. And no Doug Lee gives the Tigers a 10-9 lead. <laughs> Very nicely done by the Tigers. They pop back in the lead. Here's Tyree White to low. Coachman. OJ got a hand on it. Coachman floater is short. Loose ball into foul is called on the way up and it will be a two shot foul. And we'll see free throws. Already the seventh foul. By the way, the, uh, the time, last time I come into this building to do a Tiger game, it was against BMCC, an early season game against the BMCC coach Dan Nigro team, mm -hmm. and they got knocked out of the building on that occasion. So I'd like to see the Tigers play a good game in this building because mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance for a few times. And in the playoffs. And in the playoffs, but I did see them with Teron Simpson and people like that, so that I'll never forget. Misses both and Queensboro still leads 10-9. And Joseph Turner is back in and handling the ball right now. Turner being guarded by Arthur Lowe. And Turner stepped on the line, the ball goes to the Caymans. Back to the Caymans. By the way, I didn't get enough of seeing Teron Simpson for two years at Queensboro. I saw him for another two years at York, <laughs> and he hit the magic three-quarter court shot that took down Staten Island in 2006. How do you like to lose like that? Amazing. They, they lost that game, the Cardinals, but Simpson curled it up, and it floated through the basket at City College. Everybody was amazed. And here's Tyree White. They were looking to run some backdoor things, but Queensboro's taking it away. And here's Arthur Lowe from the top of the key. 13 on the shot clock. Lowe being guarded by Ojugbali. We're down to seven. They go baseline, floater. And it's good, and Hostos goes up 11-10. Harris Coachman showing us what he can do. And as I said, he's one of the few players, not just for Hostos, for each team tonight that can make his own shot. And what we mean is he can get movement going, get to the basket, and do something creatively. And that's what makes him such a good player. But Dr. Jody King called timeout, and he told his whole team to sit down while we talks to them in the huddle. Fans, don't forget to register in advance. So many great players have come through the community college ranks in the CUNY, and a lot of them have come through Queensboro. There was another kid named Robert Alexis who had a great career at Queensboro, and he was all set to go to Baruch and continue his career, and I have no doubt he would have done well in that conference, but he hurt his knee, and he never really got a chance to do things there. But the player that really stands out, I call, I call Teron Simpson Mr. Mr. February, because he always stepped up in February and did something big, you know, like they call Reggie Jackson right. Mr. October. The guy that really stands out is Jeffrey Boone, who uh, might have been one of the best physical talents that ever played in the CUNY conference. Just a terrific player. And don't forget our friend Gamal Steele. I'll never forget him either, because that was a, a run that was magic for Queensboro. I think they won four titles in a row at that point. Four, I believe they did uh, five in a row, 94 through 98, and then Four they won. Four for Cynickson, yeah. Yeah, and then they tacked on a sixth title in 03 with Cynickson. Remember before him they had Jerry Powell Jr. Jerry Powell Jr. went on to the NBA. Because he 
his friend Lenny Wilkins was head coach of the Atlanta Hawks. Not a bad friend to have, huh? No. They have been friends at Boys High so many years before. And you always knew Lenny could get you the ball. Yes. One of the great underrated point guards and coaches. And Play Gamal Steele just walked into the gym. How do you like that? Yeah, played at Boys High, as you said. There is Gamal Steele. And here's Queensboro looking to take back the lead with Blaine Bridie with the ball right now. And Bridie puts it in off glass and Queensboro goes up 12-11. These younger Queensboro team, uh, Queensboro players are giving them something to be happy about tonight. By the way, whoever is in the building. Last touch by Coachman, the ball goes to QCC. Queensboro ball up by one. It's Turner walking it up, Hostos. Already in their defense. Turner to Bridie. Bridie thought about taking the three and then Coachman was right on him. Bridie is left all alone and misses. It would have been nice if he could have put that one down. Here's Arthur Lowe. The coachman, Turner over pursued. Bell, nice pass, but then they take it back out. Tyree White. Coachman. Nothing flowing for Hostos right now. There's a good look. But that doesn't fall either. Hodge with the rebound. And that will be a two shot foul. They did work the ball, got the shot, did not fall as David said, and then they went back after it, able to get the ball inside and the foul was committed. Getting to that loose ball with a nice bit of effort was uh, Richard uh, Herbert. He'll end up at the line. First one is good, it's 12-12. So Hendricks makes the first team. Uh, Hendricks, excuse me, Hendricks. Kings. 12-12, 7-11 to go in the first half. I'll take it, I'll, I'll take that <laughs> position. Not if you're Hostos. As the second free throw is missed, Queensboro trying to take back the lead. And Turner gets the play from Coach Holford. And, and Coach Holford's telling him, clear it out, let him have some space. So they push everybody over to the right side. Turner doing a lot of dribbling, and now Denal gets it into McFarland, and McFarland puts it in off glass. Andre McFarland. Play work. Very much so, and McFarland has six points, and QCC has a 14-12 lead. McFarland has those long arms. He can catch passes in there and do some nifty things. Nifty. It's Caleb Youssef. Jody King looking for him to contribute off the bench. Youssef, back outside, Hodge. And Hodge, down to five on the clock, goes inside and is blocked. And Turner. Running with it for QCC and loses it. And Chad Coachman has it for the Caymans. Coachman coming back the other way. And he loses it and Queensboro gets it back. And now he throws it away. <laughs> Hodge, down low, blocked, out of bounds, ball to Queensboro. Oh yeah, I tell you, the Tigers are not letting anything go uncontested down there. With the arms of McFarlane, with the size of Denal, and, and when, uh, when Ajabelli was in there earlier, I mean, they're just contend contending with everything. Looks like a different team right now than the last time we saw them. Well, the last time we saw them, they beat BMCC. I guess the last time against Hostos. Yeah, last time against Hostos, yes. And here's OJ giving Queensboro a 16-12 lead, and Jody King calls yeah, another timeout. Very unhappy looking Jody King. I think he uh, has his questions at this point, whether his Hostos team has come out on full cylinders tonight. And Queensboro's uh, at times made them look like not the one seed. I'm going to be honest with you, but yeah. there's a lot of time to go in this game. And now is the time when good teams start to assert themselves. So let's see what happens. Hostos is top 10 team in the nation. 
Yeah, it's a very they're... interesting game right now. Yeah. And Greensboro's doing damage inside. Yeah, and they're really doing a great job down here on the defensive end on the inside, too. They're, as I said, they're not giving up any, any uncontested shots. And we'll go back again, David, to the game we did at Queensboro when they kept running those back doors for Hostos. They had uh, they had uh, Hodge perched out on the wing. They were working people off the ball, but that's not happening tonight. So uh, they're going to have to find their offense collectively again, and they're going to have to do it in a different way. And they have scores. They have Coachman. They have Washington, they have Brown who can score, and Hodge who can score if necessary, even though he's a point guard. There's definitely not any mystery as to why Queensboro's in this game. They have played as good a half of basketball as maybe they played all year. Still 5.33 to go in that half, Joe. To this point. Yes. <laughs> We're in Manhattan's building, so maybe a little of the pressure gets taken off that you're not playing at home. It's a neutral court, a little different setting. You don't have to worry about the emotion of playing at home or the nervousness of playing on the road. And there's a backdoor pass, and Coachman hits again, and it's 16-14. Coachman says, wait a minute. You guys stop talking up Queensboro. I'm, I'm going to park one in right here. <laughs> Whitey gets it down low. No basket, foul called on the court. I think McFarlane has made a big impact in this game with his wingspan. He's got those long arms, he's tough. He's tough down there. Six early points. And here's Turner trying to get it in, does to Bridie. And Bridie takes a three and it's good. And Queensboro leads 19-14. Watching McFarland throw a pick there. He's not afraid to bang bodies either. He's not afraid to be physical. And they've hit that 19 point mark that they scored against Hostos in the first two meetings, and that shot's no good. And Queens he gets that ball. rebound right there. And Turner running up ahead to Bridie. Bridie another three, but that one is no good, and rebounded by the Caymans. Well, they were alive on the Queensboro bench, jumping up. They wanted that three to go right there. Yeah, that put them up eight. That bench would have been through the roof and a steal. A terrible pass. Turner, Queensboro with numbers. Ojugbele, and a blocking foul is called. Wow. <laughs> After that, after that Coachman basket, they didn't sink back into a little bit of a panic. They just kept coming at Hostos again. You know Robert Holford's into it now. The jacket's off. I think my jacket's going to come off. Well, that's because it's about 120 degrees yeah. in here. Boy, they're getting into this game, though. This is the most emotional game Queensboro's played in a while. They, they're really doing it on both ends. OJ misses the first, and that may have been another thing with Hostos. If they were able to take a big lead early, it would have been tough for Queensboro to respond because they haven't shown that they could earlier in the year. But the fact that they're right in it, their bench is into it. Just have to get that intensity level up, play defense. Sounds easy, but it's not. I mean, then they're doing it in every phase. OJ splits the free throws, and it's 2014. I told you I've been following the Wizards a lot this year, and it's like watching the Wizards come of age. <laughs> the way they play each team a little tougher every time they play them. Right, and here's Brown. Nearly a five-second violation. Here's Hodge being guarded by Ojugbele. Great defense, and the pass is intercepted. And it's Turner running. Ojugbele to Turner. Turner goes inside, and he's going to go to the line for two. Now, don't get me wrong, everybody that's following us tonight. I'm not saying the Wizards are there by any means, but they have gotten better. They have gotten better. And I'm not saying Queensboro's there, but they played a very good first half here. More than good. Maybe the best defensive half they've played all year up to this point. So here's Turner. And it's 21-14. Oh, 
or the low end is the game you know, Honestly, David, there's very few things they've done wrong in this first half. Very few. Really? I thought it was big when they didn't score for the first three and a half minutes or so when they were right in the game still. And it's 22-14. Biggest lead of the game for Queensboro. 3.40 to go in the first half. QCC leads by eight. And here's Brown. Brown loses it. And it's Bridey. Did you think Hostos was going to be the team turning over the ball tonight? No, certainly not. And they have to reset the shot clock. It reads 15. I guess they'll put about 30 on it. It says 35. I guess they should run a few seconds off of it. And it's at 31 now. And a foul called away from the ball. I really didn't see anything, but there was a push <laughs> off the ball. That's what happens. That much contact, but that's what happens when you're in the nosebleed. It's also what happens when your team is playing back on its heels. You don't get many calls, and Hostos is not even getting calls right now. And let's watch Denal go to the line. You know, talked about the lineage and the tradition that Horford, uh, Holford has brought to all his teams. I remember one of his first teams I followed, he had marvelous Marvin Lynch. I mean, this guy was going over the basket to dunk balls. A terrific athlete. Played with... Uh, there's another free throw made, by the way. 23-14, they've been knocking down their free throws. Back to played the with uh, Played with Donald... Donald uh, Heine or Herney, one of those fellas. And they had a, a pair of terrific players. And uh, he's got McFarland tonight playing big around the basket. So and the lead is in double figures, 24-14, 3.20 to go in the first. Do uh, Henny, Henny, excuse me, is his name. I want to get that right, because he might be in the building. You never know. <laughs> Good defense. Rolex Smith with the ball. Smith being hounded by OJ. They're down to 10 on the shot clock. Low. Low. And a foul against Queensboro. Yeah, picked up some contact on the way as he went hard charging and got swiped on the way. 10 point Queensboro lead right now. So that is a big stoppage there for Hostos and they'll end up trying to pick up some points at the line here. It's a tough one. You play 30 seconds of good defense and then you commit a foul. And the first one is good, 24-15. But there have been a lot of trips up court tonight and I can rarely tell you an opportunity where Queensboro didn't take to play very tough defense and that I have no doubt it gives them this nine point lead right now. Low looking to make both and can't. And a foul is called against the Caymans. They fouled OJ as he went up for the rebound. They banged into OJ. And it was number 15 trying to get in there to pull it off. Uh, Tyree White, the player out of science skills high school. A freshman. So OJ goes to the line. They're over the limit. OJ. <laughs> now everybody realized it was a one and one. Yeah. Missed the front end. Here's Chris Van Buren going baseline. Bell lost the handle on it. Queensboro ball. And it's Turner. Bounce pass to Bridie. And Bridie is fouled by Brown. 2.39 to go in the first half. No hesitation again by Queensboro. They got that ball. They headed up court. Everybody assumed their position. You had uh, the big guy, number 40, banging in low, trying to establish position. And then something takes place out on the wing. It gets you some free throws. And they've just played winning basketball in this first half. One and one. It's nice to see winning basketball when, they, when you play that way. Here's Brady at the line for one and one. Makes the front end, the lead is back up to ten. 
here at the BMCC gym. Uh, I noticed they put in a set of seats on the other side now. They only had one half of the gym yeah. seated. Now it's surround sound. Biggest lead of the game for Queensboro with 11. Defense chant from the Queensboro bench. Great place to hold the tournament. They held it here every year for a number of years. Every year. Step back jumper by Brown is no good. Tipped and rebounded by McFarlane. By who? He's doing pretty good, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, really. And Turner is called for carrying. I was asking you, David, uh, not to put you on, but uh, <laughs> you know we've heard his name a lot. We, we didn't think we were going to hear his name that much, McFarlane. And he wasn't even in the starting lineup. Get these guys motivated and uh, look out. <laughs> These are young players, all of them, really. You got freshmen and you have sophomores. That's about it. Here's Brown. And the foul is called on Brian Denall. Foul charge number 44, Brian. What age group is McFarlane? Is he a freshman or a sophomore in terms of uh, eligibility? I'm not sure. I don't uh, have that in front of me. I'll try to pick that up yeah. as we go along. but. Playing like a veteran tonight. All that matters right now is it's 26-16. Yeah, let's not, uh, if you're Queensboro, give Hostos any opportunities to get to that line. They want to help him out. Hostos in the double bonus, and it's 26-17, 2-0-2 to go. <laughs> Queensboro Jeez. looking to end the half strong. And here's Turner crossing half court and slowing it up a bit. And Hostos in the box in one combination zone. Now OJ to the basket, and the blocking foul is called. Foul is charge number 55. Yeah, OJ took it strong to the basket. He said, You're going to box in one, but you're not boxing me in. And he picked up the foul. He got a free throw line. And that's the first foul on Henderson Bell. That has a ring to it, Henderson Bell. Let's watch uh, the first one. 27-17. We like OJ. We, we've been at the gym and big smile on his face. He welcomes us there and it's nice to see him playing a good game tonight. We like everybody, of course, but <laughs> OJ is uh, a little bit of a standout at times with his personality. 28-17, 100 seconds to play in the first half. I like that, 100 seconds. <laughs> Gives us a real perspective. Brown hits a three-pointer and it's 28-20. Wintrow has to make sure he doesn't heat up. Yeah, you know, David, I said perspective. We got to keep perspective because this hostess team can strike at any time. Larry Dantzler learned about Brown last year. And a charge is called. Ball will go back to Hostos. Well, as much as they've been outplayed right here, Hostos can get to six and maybe within five if they get something this time up court. So um, look out for the Caymans. Do not, do not start uh, thinking you have this game in tow in any regard. Now the ref's having a word. About what, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to find out what exactly a Cayman is. As we hear the Jeopardy music behind it. A large alligator. Judging from the huge inflatable alligator behind the Cayman's bench. And they are very colorful Caymans at Hostos. They have those bright orange colors with the blue colors. They play in the Bronx. Queensboro, of course, plays in Queens. You might have picked that up by the front end of their name. Is there going to be a geography test at the end of this? No, but, you know, this is the CUNY. 
And we have to let everybody know where different teams come from. Some teams come from Brooklyn, some teams come from Staten Island. The Hostos foul. And they call a foul on Hostos now. They change it after all that time. How do you like that? I thought there might have been some question there because of the way it took place. Well, Jody King doesn't like that. In fact, not only do the teams come from different boroughs, but the players come from yeah. all different boroughs, too. Let's watch these free throws, though. That a big call because it's 28-20 and the free throws are going to go Queensboro's way. Tigers will be shooting two here with OJ again. Ojugbley makes the first, it's 29-20. Ojugbley with seven points. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> no, thank you. Ojugbley, 10 points. <laughs> makes them both and it's 30-20. The lead is back up to double digits. Good job by OJ. And the clock was running before he touched it. Lead back up to 10, and the Caymans, they don't have coachmen out there right now. Let's see who they go to in this situation. It's Brown. And they have to make sure he doesn't heat up. Nice pass inside, it's Henderson Bell, and Bell is fouled. He was at an angle on the lane. Again, Queensboro made it difficult for him. He picked up the foul by twisting at the right time and delivering the shot. And, uh, Jody King has had to go to his bench uh, and try to find some stability. First free throw is off as Jody King shakes his head. Henderson Bell not able to ring it and not at wow. able to come close on that one. Wow. That's right. <laughs> and Queensboro could go two for one here. Now that's interesting because when I was coming over here, I stopped in one of the TV stores and I was watching what NBA players miss free throws completely. How many times they missed the net. And there was one right there. Here's Denal doubled. You got to Turner. Bridie. And Bridie, some help coming over. Here's Ojugbley. Back outside, it's Bridie, and I like they're running some time off the clock. Yeah. Shortening yeah. the game, fewer possessions. They're down to four now. Three, Turner puts it in off glass. How do you like that? A 12-point lead for Queensboro, their biggest lead of the half. 20 seconds to go. Postos can hold for the final shot if they want. Look at this defense, they're down to 12, 11, 10. And here's Jeremiah Brown, directing traffic. Brown is fouled with four and three, 10 seconds to go. Now that clock was ticking down as Brown went down the left of the lane. Took a big leap back and drew the foul. Brown knew it was no good as soon as it left his hand. Yeah, you could see his body English. They're not making their free throws either. Uh, I don't need the body language to hear him from up here. And Queensboro could also get a decent shot off. They have four seconds and three tenths. 32-21. Pressure by Hostos. Ojugbele to Turner. Puts it up and it's an air ball. But a solid half for Queensboro. More than solid. They lead by 11, 32 21. It's only a half, but oh, what a half they played. Upset in the making. Number one hostos came in to come in, and they're held to 21 points in the first half. Yeah, they played very inspired basketball, Queensboro. They made the defense work. 
and they've translated it into good moves up court, scored some timely baskets, big baskets. They've gotten their confidence against Hostos for the most part, and they lead it by 11. Now the question is, can they maintain that against the number one seed? We could have a story here at the end if they can do it. But we'll uh, there's going to be a lot of time on their clock to kill, yes. And we'll see if they can keep it up in the second half. David Bussell and Joe Massey back for the second half of action. Queensboro is 20 minutes away from shocking the Hostos Caymans. They lead 32-21 at halftime. I don't think uh, too many people expected this one. Hostos coming in 8-0 in CUNY. But their backs are up against the walls now, Joe Massey. And the, uh, the coach, Jody King, who is, by the way, the all-time winningest coach in maritime history, has to find a way to win this one tonight. Uh, it's far from over, though, David. I mean, a 32-21 lead at halftime, that's half the job for Queensboro. You have to think Hostos is going to come out with a fury to start this second half and try to turn that around. I mean, they're going to... They're going to come after Queensboro. Let's see how it works out here. How about the defensive intensity from Queensboro when the first half was remarkable? Very, very nice to see. And something we joked about on earlier telecast, and there's a steal by Hostos about Holford, and he's not going to slow it down. Well, they slowed it down a bit as Chateau commits the foul there. But something we didn't expect to see happen. They're doing it, and it's working out for them right now. And excuse me, the foul was on Carl Benjamin, not Chateau. By the way, the Queensboro women lost in the first game to the Hostos ladies. How do you see that matchup between Manhattan and um, Hostos at this point for the women? That one could really go either way. They split yeah. the two regular season meetings. Hostos won by two, 48-46. Remember, Norfleet had 23 points, and that shot is short. Yeah, right away, uh, Hostos front rimming one. The head singleton jumper is no good. Tipped. Loose ball. Queensboro gets it back. Chateau puts it in off glass. Queensboro yeah, yeah. goes up by 13. We've seen Chateau jamming and he went the glass route on that one. His first points of the game and Queensboro's biggest lead. It's 34-21. So the opening salvo by the Tigers. Tip no good. Tipped again. Loose ball. Queensboro comes away with it. Singleton. Singleton being guarded by Chad Coachman. The two number ones going at it. Singleton. Chateau went on the floor for it. Couldn't grab it. By the way, Singleton was their leading scorer at Queensboro on the year in the CUNY against the CUNY teams. And here we have a foul down this way. And the blocking foul is called. Singleton uh, had been averaging 11.8 at one point against the rest of the CUNY, and Joseph Turner, eight points. Joseph Turner had a nice first half here tonight. Good, nice distribution of the ball. Not a ton of scoring, but... Everybody got involved. Yeah. Sure did, and a loose ball. And it's Carl Benjamin who comes away with it. And Benjamin can't lay it in. Ah. And here's Coachman, and Benjamin got a hand on it from behind, and Coachman jumps with it out of bounds, Queensboro ball. Yeah, he carried it out of bounds. Uh -huh. uh, nothing has changed so far. Ah, here's some pressure from Hostos, but Troy Singleton has it. Not much of a press put on. I must say, these little guards of Queensboro have handled the ball very well, too. They've done a good job. And here's Singleton. Singleton, I think they're trying to get it down low to Abunse. And that will be a five second violation. The ball goes to Hostos. Yeah, you gotta get rid of that ball. <laughs> Singleton in his second season is 5'10". And we have a timeout, a 30 second timeout. Benjamin in his second season is 5'10". They're a little quick darting guards, and they've darted a lot tonight, and they've uh, chimed in with the big guys who have locked everything up down low. Ball has worked very well, machine-like, for Queensboro, but 
It's a matter of how long that can hold out. Right now, Hostos, they came into the half down by 11. They're down by 13. How do you like Robert Holford calling a 30-second timeout up by 13? 18.06 to go. As Howard Cosell said on a game one time, said, how about that? How do you like that? And Don Merritt said, I like it. I like that timeout because it shows that he wants to keep them mentally into this uh, into this game right away in the second half. Turner making sure not to step out here. Singleton. Singleton get, takes it to the basket, can't finish. And Singleton stepped on the line with the ball. Ah, tough break there. That, by the way, how do you feel, David, when those coaches used to bring the chairs out on the court and sit the team down? Did you <laughs> like that little ploy that several coaches used? Well, I'm sure something. I'm not sure if I like it. but They use all kinds of things to keep their team together. Well, remember now, uh, Phil Jackson was the first one to talk to his assistant coaches away from the team as there's a loose ball. <laughs> and Turner lays it in. Queensboro goes up by 15. <laughs> Defense leading to offense. And we thought Hostos might be blowing them out tonight, and yeah. uh, so far Queensboro's done everything they can to hurt Hostos. Yeah, well, <laughs> you never know in sports. There's a loose ball. Singleton went on the floor for it. And here's a three-pointer, and it's good. Three Jeremiah Brown makes it 36-24. Jeremiah Brown! I was going to say to finish the Phil Jackson story, as Hostos puts on the press, and Abun say, Loose ball, Hosto sends up with it. And traveling is called. They pulled the chair out, Queensboro ball. Uh, the music at the United Center where the Bulls played was so loud near the bench that Jackson sometimes couldn't hear his assistants. So he would pull them to talk to each other as Jordan Chateau returns. And then they would return to talk to the team. Yeah, Chicago could be a very intimidating place to go into <laughs> when the team is playing well in that city. I was going to say, those were the Bulls coaches who had to get away yeah, from the bench. Yeah, that's right. Imagine the opponents, his Turner's jumper is no good. And a foul is called. And that's three fouls on Queensboro already in the south. Now charge number 32, Chucks, the one save. That's his third. Not gonna say anything, let's just watch the next few minutes. It's a 12 point game now. It had been up to, what, 13? 15. 15, 15. yeah. 15, 36, 21 it was. And here's Hodge guarded by Singleton. And there's an offensive foul. It's on Chad Coachman. He was trying to make room for Hodge, and the thing is, you don't have to make that much room for Hodge because he can dart out very quickly with the ball. They got a little caught up there. Coach King just pat him, said, get up court, don't worry about it. Don't, don't let these uh, mistakes start to set in. We're still the better team. That's how they got to feel. And they're pressing early. Sometimes you see teams Late to wait in the game to press, spin move, and the basket by Turner. Queensboro goes up 38-24. Although Queensboro got the points there, I still like the pressing by Hostos because sometimes you see yeah. team get back into it and it turns out they Tell waited too late. These identical looking Queensboro guards have done very well for themselves. And another three pointer by Jeremiah Brown. They have to make sure he doesn't get hot. 38-27, it's down to 11. Chateau to Singleton. It's across half court. Spin move. Benjamin being guarded by Coachman. Benjamin outside, Singleton. Trying to muscle his way. It's Turner. 12 on the shot clock. Against Hodge. Yeah, good defense by Hodge. There's Singleton guarded by Brown. About the step back. Got to put it up. One. Turner. Beat the clock, but the shot was no good. They're turning up the defensive intensity on the Hostos side. And here's Hodge, coast to coast, and a charge is called. And Jody King is saying, how can that be a charge when he never had the position established and went up in the air? Hostos starting to lose their composure a little bit, perhaps. That was a very close call there. But Queensboro benefits. They're going to get Denell back in the game. Denell. Also returning is number 44, Brian and Denell. 38-27. All you can say, David, is has the doubt creeped in yet on the Hostos side? Probably not. <laughs> not doubt, but 
there should be uh, some fine line between panicking and a little urgency. And they are pressing. They understand in a great strip by Coachman. Coachman with the pickpocket. Counted on the foul. Big play. Chad Coachman will go to the line to finish the conventional three-point play. Big not, play. Not really a good foul by the Tigers once you make the turnover. There's no need to compound now, the problem. Two, That's the type of play they needed to reverse the spin a little bit, if the, as they say. And it's 38-29. And the thing is, it comes from one of your catalysts, one of your big players, so it has a double whammy type of effect. Yes. Misses the free throw, Queensboro ball. It's Benjamin. Denal gets it to Chateau. Chateau to OJ. And OJ puts it in off glass. They really broke the press there, and it's 40 29. Yeah, they've obviously spent a lot of time working on that press. We saw it last time against BMCC. They really broke down under it. Brown thought about putting up another three. Gets inside this time. Down low, Tyree White puts it in off glass, and Hostos is going to have to attack. It's 40 31. Chateau. They got to get it across soon. Hostos really pressuring now. And they get it to OJ, and OJ attacks the basket, and a great job by Coachman to get the hand in on it, but it will be Queensboro ball with 22 on the shot clock. Good defense by Coachman, though. Very good to recover and get back there. 22 is sufficient time, though, to work here with a nine-point lead. Let's see what kind of shot they get. OJ down low. They have Denal, spin move. Shot off glass is too strong. And Brown comes away with it for Hostos. And then he overthrows Arthur Lowe. Ten and foot Celtic couldn't over. have caught that one. Yeah. Who couldn't have? I said a ten foot Celtic oh, could not okay. have caught that pass. I tell you this about Queensboro though. They know exactly what they want to do with the ball when they get it down there. Those big men have not been hesitant tonight. No. That's been a big deal because we saw them. And sometimes their big men were hesitant to be aggressive. They're being very aggressive, and they're going to take the all out right now because they don't want him to. Tiger uh, possession. They don't want him to get uh, a little overwhelmed by what's going on. And here's Eric Light with the ball. Now Chateau, White, Turner, Turner, tough shot, and it's long. Rebounded by Hostos, and the Caymans are pushing. It's Coachman. And a terrible pass. Queensboro with numbers now. Turner. Bounce pass. Somehow got to its target. The putback is no good. Queensboro had some chances at the rim and couldn't finish. Under 14 minutes to play. Tigers 40. Caymans 31. Very good basketball game oh, here man. tonight at Darren, the MCC. Darren Wilson with it. Being guarded by Ojugbali. Arthur Lowe now. Jody King going deep into the bench. And it's low to the basket. Oh. Couldn't finish, but it'll go to the line for two shots. And almost hung in there Foul for him. Foul the is on OJ. OJ trying to swat after that ball. They sit in Hodge on the bench right now. And they're doing it without him. Coachman playing with number 13. We'll see some free throws here. First free throw is good. It's 40 32. As Lowe sinks the first, and Henderson Bell goes in for the Caymans. They get a little closer. So, uh, little by little now, the Caymans are working their way into. Uh, into the margin they want to be in. 40-33, Hostos in striking distance. Still 13 and a half to go. Eric Light to Benjamin and he's doubled. And Robert Holford calls timeout. Wants him to stay out of those corners. Yeah, I would stay away from the sideline too because that becomes an extra defender yeah. in basketball of any kind. You just hate to get trapped over there because you have nowhere to go. That's why Holford wanted to call the timeout. All right, the Tigers really are going to have to work against the press for the duration of this game. There's no doubt now. 
You figured Hostos would come out and turn up the heat and make them earn this game in every regard. So let's see if Queensboro can stay composed under this type of duress. It's been a uh, terrific, terrific game to this point. To the surprise of many. Just one of the semifinals. And then either Hostos or Queensboro will meet tomorrow night the winner of the second game. The MCC in Bronx right after this, and the winners will face Friday night. You know, we've talked so many times about how many good teams Hostos has had and how many good teams Queensboro's had. We haven't talked about some of those Kingsboro teams over the years. They've been, they've been massive yeah, and killers. Both, and both the men and women missed the playoffs, and here's Queensboro running some time off the clock, a bit of a stall. So they won't be involved this year, Kingsboro, on the men's side. And look, Robert Holford is surprising us. The three-pointer is an air ball. Not much going on the possession. Isn't that something? Kingsboro won't even be involved this year in the tournament. Hassan Duncan not coaching them this year. At the end of the year. It's usually everybody has to go through Kingsboro the last few years. Yeah, they were a tough team for some. And actually, uh, Kingsboro won a game in here, 79-78. As, as a foul is called down low, McFadden. Sean McFadden for Kingsboro who hit a game-winning three-pointer. There was no stopping him, was there, Joe Massey? Yeah. Meanwhile, Hostos has gotten to work down here. They've cut it into that lead. They've made it seven, and they end up back at the line. So all business right now for Jody King and his Caymans. Already six fouls committed this half by the Tigers, and the free throw is good, and it's 40-34. As Rashad Hendricks hit on the first. They got a lot of players on this team. It's a question of who will step up and hurt you. 40-35. We've spoken to Coach King on several occasions. He made that point right away. He said, I have more players this year. I had terrific players last year, but I have more players this year. And Queensboro breaks the press, and Eric Light finishes at the basket at 42-35. And Eric White was one of the top field goal percentage guys. He was third in CUNY. Very Excuse nicely me, he, done. He led CUNY. It's funny, he didn't take a lot of shots, so his scoring was pretty quiet, but he was consistent. Ball ends up staying with the Caymans inside, and a charge is called. It is a charge. And Jody King unhappy again. I was going to say, let's see how that Queensboro defensive intensity is, because let's face it. That has been the story of the game, the way they've been able to play defensively uh, tough against Hostos. And they're still up by seven. And here's Aubrey to OJ. OJ goes baseline, and he finishes at the basket, and it's 44-35. OJ almost stumbled with that ball, kept his footing. A few, Terrific uh, athlete. A few Hostos fans in the crowd noticed that also, Joe. Terrific athlete is OJ. <laughs> Floater is short, no whistle blown. Queensboro looking to push the lead back up to double digits. Ojugbali outside to Aubrey. So, uh, so is Robert Holford taking the air out of the ball tonight? <laughs> no. And there's a steal. Hosto, since Coachman, pull up jumper is good right in Eric White's face. It's 46, excuse me, 44 37. Coachman's a ball player, and uh, yeah. he will stay in there and continue to play. It's Eric White. And Light did a good job of contesting Coachman's shot, and here's OJ, and a charge is called. Good call by the ref. Little doubt about that. Hostos ball down by seven, the 11 minutes, 20 seconds remain. OJ, that's his third, team seven. Here's Hodge bringing it up. Crossing half court, he's guarded by Chris Aubrey. And here's White. White looking for somebody. Loose ball. Almost Hostos. in possession of Queensboro, I'm sorry. Hostos will keep it with 19 on the shot clock. I was gonna say, Coachman reminds me of a kid who played for Brooklyn, a Mill John. He looks a lot like him, plays a lot like him, plays very hard. Pretty good player, Emil John. 
Jeremiah Brown with it for the Caymans. 15 on the shot clock. And here's Coachman. Coachman doubled. Gets it to Brown. A three-pointer from the corner is off. And Brown gets his own rebound. Goes to the basket and puts it in off glass. 44-39, 10.40 to go. David, that's something that wasn't happening earlier. They weren't getting to those loose balls like that. And Turner is fouled. Coachman got a piece of him. He's trying to bring that ball up in his midsection. Coachman almost had the snatch. And it's been an 18 to eight run for the Caymans to cut it to a five point game. In fact, they called Maverick Hodge on the other side of that play. They brought Maverick Hodge back in, by the way. And it'll be interesting to see how he can work with Coachman to uh, to bring them closer. But we see free throws right now for, or no free throws if it wasn't in the act. It'll see if they call in the act. It will be I two believe. free throws. Four team fouls on Hostos. They're the home team on this neutral court. Maverick Hodge pleading his case with the ref, and now one of the refs talking to Jody Kay. Jody's not happy because uh, <laughs> he had a tough game, as we said, uh, about a week ago. Let's watch the free throws here, though. These become pretty big free throws now. Five-point game. They're all big free throws from this point forward, and that one is long. Joseph Turner has one shot. As the Darren Wilson goes in for the Caymans, Maverick Hodge Darren goes Wilson to the bench. Returns for the Caymans. And then they take... They take him out because he picked up his fourth personal. Yeah, Hodge, who won the Burt Beagle Sportsmanship Award this season. One more and he's done. And Turner misses both. Brown, first team all CUNY with the ball. Being guarded by Turner. Back out to Brown. Brown trying to go baseline, he's cut off the jumper. Rims out, and Chateau oh, got away oh, with the foul. Yes, sir. Chateau pulled him. He pulled back just in time when the official was turning, and he didn't get that call. 35 seconds to shoot for Hostos here. And they're only down by five. They were down by 15 in the second half. And the offense for Queensboro has become more sporadic. Contested jumper is an air ball. And a foul against Hostos. Pushing off on the other side to get to that loose ball. And Jody King can't believe it again. Came in in the full court press. To tell inbounding, he'll try to get it to Eric White. Well, we like Jody, but you're yes. wrong, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> we need a break here. 10.09 to go in the ball game, and it's only a five-point game. And Chateau's got to get it in, and he does to Chris Aubrey. Got it back to Chateau. Came and got a fingertip on it. It's light. Benjamin got to stay away from the corners, and now Aubrey's midcourt. And Queensboro can get a little slow on offense because their defense has been so good, but... Yeah, they've really slowed down offensively, yeah. though. They have to get it cranked up again. Yeah, and here's Chateau. Oh. Nice hook shot. Chateau makes it 46-39. That was a Chateau hook. Coachman, off glass, it's good. He answers right back. It's 46-41, nine and a half minutes to play. Coachman. And now Aubrey coming back at the other end. Too strong. And Holford yelling at his Tigers to get back. We have a ball game here, David. Oh, yeah. Here's Brown. Brown nearly oh. lost it. And Brown goes to the basket, and he's fouled. So Brown and Coachman are going to do those type of things right there. They're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to draw some fouls when they don't make the basket. It's become a very tough uh, sled now for Queensboro. If he makes these free throws, they're within three. Brown's first. is short. 
By the way, that was the second foul on Eric Light, the eighth team foul on Queensboro in the second half. Hostos has committed five. A lot of those big guys are on the bench now for Queensboro. Chateau, the only oh, big guy man. out there, and he traveled with that rebound falling backwards. How in the world does that happen, Joe? He was off balance yeah. when he grabbed it, and he couldn't get his footing. And there's an extra possession for Hostos. For the side, is now Dwayne Brighty goes in for Joseph Turner. 12, Joseph. Remember, Brighty played well earlier, taking those little floaters. All out defense is needed here. Here's Brown. Brighty's got to get up off the floor. They're going to call a foul on that. Blocking foul. Once again, Brown getting into the lane and making himself a problem. And uh, he's going to pick up those fouls, as we said, and he can draw Hostos closer again. They had a chance before. Two shots. So the Caymans right on the border of getting back in this game. I, I think uh, they're going to have to get one of those big guys back in eventually. 46-42 as Brown makes the first. Joseph Turner returns for the Tigers. Joseph Turner is back in for the Tigers. Now Chris Aubrey to the bench. Brown makes both at 46-43. I think Chris Aubrey may be injured on the sidelines. That's why he's out. Press forces a steal. White is fouled by White. And that will be two more free throws. Well, this is what we hoped wouldn't happen. And Queensboro seems to be wearing down a little bit. They're over the foul limit. Free throws coming up again for Hostess. Not much time off that clock, and they can draw even closer. And the full court press will do that, even though it doesn't always turn you over or force the miss shot. It could take your legs out while shooting, as White's first free throw is short. Hostos isn't doing themselves too many favors at the line. Yeah, they have to they have to be a little spent right now trying to get back in this game, too, so you get a little wobbly at the line. Yeah, there's something you see a lot, too. A team down 15 comes back to tied, and then they end up losing anyway. It's been a tough basketball game in every regard. Yes. 46-44, 8.51 to go. Well, no. right now, David, all bets are off here, which means it's anybody's ball game. No press by Hostos. They call it off even after forcing the turnover. Now here's Bridie, spin move. Down low, nice pass from Bridie and light finishes. It's 48-44. Great pass by Bridie off the spin. He's played very well tonight. And here are the Caymans with it. It's Wilson and a steal. Queensboro coming back the other way with numbers. Turner, jumper, is good. Tigers lead 50-44. And the Tigers are showing the grit and determination of Robert Holford right now. They will not give up in this game. And here's Jeremiah Brown to White. White trying to go to the basket and the foul is called on light. With 7.59 remaining. I tell you one thing the Tigers have continued to do tonight, even though they picked up some fouls here and they're getting accumulating a lot of fouls. That's number four committed by number 20 also. And White hasn't even played that long. Eric White. Uh, they have they've made things tough. They they haven't given up easy baskets. They fouled when they've had to. 50-45. That gets a little frustrating for the other team, you know, because nothing has come easy tonight. Kids, young guys like to make easy baskets. They like to look good out there. They can get frustrated when they're not getting easy looks. And the Tigers have not made them look good in a lot of ways tonight. So that's why they're in this game. And how about the Hostos determination down 15? Oh, you got to give them credit. Oh, man. You, know, you got to give them credit. But they've had to slug it out. And now they're down four, 50-46. And they press again. But you know, young guys, they just don't like to slug it out. And here's Bridey. Hodge got a hand in on it. Queensboro keeps it with 28 on the shot clock. Pass 
pass was intended for Carl Benjamin in the corner. That it was. Never got to Benjamin. 28 seconds for the Tigers to work with. Keep that good flow they've had going. Here's Bridey. Bridey, nice move, but the shot is short. Chateau with it underneath. Couldn't finish. Hostos ball. 7.40 to go. Had to go up a little stronger with that Chateau. He had the height. Hodge with the ball being guarded by Bridey. Seven and a half to play. Here's Coachman. Guarded by Turner. Coachman for three. Got it. Chad Coachman makes it a one point game, 50 49. Yeah, you saw Turner get caught up behind that screen, and that's all Coachman needed to gun home the three. Nice job by Coachman to break up the pass intended for Benjamin, or else the Tigers may have had a layup opportunity. It's been a 28 to 14 run. Here's uh, OJ coming back in. They sat OJ for a long time. Those hopefully. big men have foul difficulties, no doubt. Well, hopefully OJ's fresh for the final 7-15. And here's Turner inbounding to Bridey. What a ball game, huh, David? This, is, this has been everything uh, we hoped for. Best we've called. Uh, watch out for a five-second violation. And Bridey lost the handle on it. Gotta give it up, and he does to Turner. In fact, we've had two good ball games here tonight. Even the ladies game was very entertaining. Down to seven on the shot clock. Six, Bridie for three. No good, and rebounded by... OJ. Uh, yeah. Here's Turner being guarded by Wilson. And uh, you don't want to give him that ball in the corner like that once again with those two defenders there. Full timeout taken by the Tigers. And they take the timeout to instruct their guards about the nuances of playing with a one point lead in a tournament. Don't put that ball in the corner, young man, because we won't get it back like that. Don't give it to OJ in the corner. Give it to him down low for the Tigers, they were up by 15, and now it's one bad. They're not really panicking, and I think they expected Hostos to make a push. Oh, this has been a, uh, a fabulous basketball game. It was a big lead in the first half, if you remember, for, for the Tigers. What was it, 40 to 31 at the half? Well, it actually ballooned to 15 in the second half. It was 36-21 as it's t-shirt toss time, the MCC. They've had the lead throughout this game, basically, after they went up very early in the game. Yeah, there were a lot of ties early on. And then Queensboro kind of pulled away, went up by 15, and now Hostos is making their push. Yeah, this is uh, the serious part of the game now, David. We have, what, about uh, six minutes? Six to go. And you can't afford to make mistakes right now against a team like Hostos. you got to keep the ball out of the corners, pull it out. I'd also counter. I don't think Hostos is in a position to make too many mistakes. Yeah, but uh. Coach Holford is telling him space. Right. Do what you were doing earlier. Stay away from the corners with the big guys because we lose the ball. They make us pay, and we can't afford that right now. Here's Turner inbounding. Righty back to Turner. Now out to Bridey. You get rid of that ball right away. Benjamin directing traffic. They're down to 12 on the shot clock. Turner down to 8, 7. Bridey down to 5. And traveling is called. With 6.17 to go, Hostos will have the ball. Now here's the spot that we talked to the assistant coaches about. You're trying to follow the coaching but yet you have to play the game at the same time. That is not easy. No. You get caught up between moves, you're looking to the bench. This is the spot Queensboro's in right now. Hostos can take their first lead since early in the game. It's Arthur Lowe being guarded by Singleton. 6.05 to go. Jump shot is no good, tipped. Ostos reclaims possession. The jumper is no good. Rebounded by Chateau, and then he loses it. Arthur Lowe with it for the Caymans. Almost at it, but he couldn't hold on to it. 
Jim held it above his head. As a height advantage on everybody, and a charge is called. Offensive foul is hitting the floor. Was the Tiger down there drawing contact? That was Benjamin. And that's the third foul on Tyree White. Tigers possession. It's a tough basketball game right now. Oh, Nothing is coming easy. Ojugbali will inbound. Pressed by the Caymans. You don't want to throw away a pass back here now. No. OJ gets across half court. The head, it's Benjamin, jumper, no good. And rebounded by White. And here's Arthur Lowe. That's where you make your fame. You stick that little jumper at this time in the game. Yeah. Lowe, being guarded by Aubrey. And that'll be a foul on McFarland. And the Caymans will go to the line for two shots to tie and take the lead. Yeah, McFarland trying to reach around him, as we said, That's use those arms of his. And he got an arm on top of his shoulder, and that gets. Uh, actually, they, did they call McFarland on that? No, it's light. Excuse me. Yeah. He's done. Oh, well, no, I was right originally. Eric Light still has yeah. four, and it's on McFarland. It's not his fifth foul, though, which is good because right. they need McFarland in there right now. He did some big things for them earlier. You have to think maybe Queensboro will lose this lead right now. Let's see. 50 50. That's, and that's the that's second what it foul is. on McFarland. 50 50 on whether they're going to lose it. <laughs> That's two on McFarland, but, but he still gonna, goes to the bench. Going to bring him off. Well, and this is to give the Caymans the lead. It's off, and Queensboro will have it. Hostos Boy, almost got it back. Can you say tumble though? <laughs> Everybody has taken a tumble in this game. Now what's interesting is the press got them back in the game, and once they tie it, they call them off. Kind of yeah, ironic. Yeah, because they don't want to expend any ex spend any more of their energy. They just want to play the game straight up now. And here's Aubrey. Five minutes to go, 50-50. Aubrey. Cross-court pass at Singleton. Nearly lost it, and he's double-teamed. And a turnover. Caymans can take the lead. It's Coachman. Hodge slows it down. You hear the bench on Queensboro saying defense, chanting defense. Hodge. Spin move. Now back out. It's Coachman. They're down to 12 on the shot clock. Coachman. Three pointer. No good. Rebounded by Wilson. Wilson's shot is no good, and another rebound, but now Queensboro has it. It's Carl Benjamin. I'll tell you, win or lose, they're going to be proud of this effort at Queensboro, but they want to win right now. There's no doubt. And they're slowing it down. They want to make this about the fewest possessions possible. They want to be a giant killer and take Hostos out and ruin their tournament. Maybe not their national ranking. We'd have to see about that. Now they're down to eight on the clock. Aubrey loses his footing. OJ with three on the clock, two. Jumper, and he's fouled in the active shooting by Darren Wilson. Wow. That could not have worked out much better for Queensboro. Run off 34 seconds, and now you go to the line. You know, we've seen that so many times in, say, the Big East tournament where the top seed will get knocked off in the tournament, yeah. and then they'll have that national ranking go on to the final four anyway. That's what this kind of thing is right here. This is to give Queensboro back the lead. Ah. It's long. Still 50 50. Jeremiah Brown returning for Hostos. And now Jeremiah Brown goes back in for Hostos. You know, what, you know what this is turning into? A pressure cooker. Darren Wilson to the bench. And OJ is at the line for his second free throw. And he misses them both. Oh, this so is only the first game tonight, too. I'm yeah. sorry, David. <laughs> this was supposed to be the blowout. Yep. And here's White. Now Coachman trying to give Hostos the lead. Can't. Loose ball. Queensboro running. It's a three-on-one. Benjamin. 
All the way. Ah. Queensboro 52, Hostos 50, 320 left. All I could say is my goodness. <laughs> what, a, what an effort by Queensboro. Here's Hodge guarded by Singleton. Now it's Hendricks and a foul is called in the act of shooting with 3.05 to play. He got fouled on a twisty turner. Was never really going to get that ball up to the hoop sufficiently, but when you can do that with your body, you could corkscrew like that, you're going to get the foul committed, and that's what he got right there. First of two is good. It's 52-51. The foul was the fourth on Ojugbali. Down the wire, Queensboro has some guys in foul trouble. To tie, and it's good, it's 52-52. Second time it's been tied. And here's Aubrey to OJ. Three minutes to play. Singleton to the basket. And he takes a jumper, and it's no good. Rebounded by Abunse, and Abunse <laughs> will go to the line. Abunse, OJ. That may be the most aggressive I've seen Abunse all year. Got the big rebound and then instead of looking back out, wanted to take it himself and now he's at the yeah. line. And that's four fouls on Tyree White. Sorry, Joe. No, I'm sorry, Dave. They, they're <laughs> big athletic kids though, these two. I mean, they get, they go after it. They got all the motor skills that you want. Big, tough players. They're not 20 point a game scorers, but who's asking them big? First and one no misses. Good. Well, OJ missed two free throws, and now Abunse misses one. Got to make these. This to give the Tigers the lead. Cannot hit either one. Still tied at 52. Cayman's looking to take the lead. This is now about winning this ball game. Who's going to who's going to win this ball game? White almost lost the handle on it. White to Hodge. And here's Hendricks for the lead. No good. And the holding oh, foul is called oh, on Aubrey. Yeah. Yep. And they're over the limit, so well, this so will mean free three, throws. Aubrey, first. Possibly the lead here for Hostos as well. Going to be two shots, by the way, because they have 10 team fouls. Brown up there. Brown up there. Getting ready. This for the lead. And hits. It's 53-52 Hostos. Bell. Remarkable study in the game of basketball, the way this game's been played. Hostos keeps coming, coming. Never really has established a true, you know, dominance in this game. 54-52 and Henderson Bell is back in for the Caymans. Tigers looking to tie or take the lead. Two minutes, 23 seconds to go. Aubrey gets help from Abunse, or he tried to. Aubrey. Long pass, Singleton thought about it. And decided not to, and a reach-in foul is called. Yeah, over top went the Hostos player. Henderson Bell. Henderson Bell. Now, there's an interesting thing. He fouled a Boonse who just missed two free throws and it's still a one and one. So if he misses the front end, it turns out that that won't be a bad foul. A lot of pressure on a Boonse right now. Boonse at the line, one and one. I've seen this basketball before, though. I saw it at Hostos. I saw it at Megger Evers. Mm -hmm. It is, let's leave it on the floor, young men. First one is good. It's 54-53. So you can attribute this type of play to the man coaching the ball club right now. I'm not saying he's done it all. The players, <laughs> have, <laughs> the players of course, have yeah. to get out there and play, too. This to tie the game. And does, 54-54, two pressure free throws by Abunse. Came in ball, 2.05 to go. Wow. Long pass, and now it's Brown. Brown, no whistle, offensive rebound. They're gonna let him play. Back outside, 
Floater is no good. Rebounded by Benjamin. Wow. Yeah, if, there's, uh, if there's one thing you don't want to do, David, you don't want to change this game on a call. This game's been played right to the nub here. All right, it's Aubrey. Queensboro ball, 95 seconds to go. Abunse outside. Now it's Singleton, 15 on the shot clock. Singleton. Timeout. The question is, here's the question. Do the Tigers feel they can win this game? Do they? Because, you know what? They could win this game right now. Now about Robert Not Holford right now, running. but I'm sorry. No, how about Robert Holford running down the sideline to get the timeout called as he saw Singleton in trouble? They'll have 11 on the shot clock and 102 in the game in regulation. I should, excuse me, not 102. That was the timeout clock. Now look at the way everybody's around him, and he's saying in that huddle, David, "Do you guys think you can win this game? Let's do it." You know, we brought it down to uh, minute 10. It's just a question of whether we think we can do it now. They think they can. They didn't come this far. From one of the big upsets in CUNY history. Very, very nicely done tonight by the Tigers. And let's give Hostos credit because they're playing now. They're not playing with the house money right now. No. They've had the uh, big expectations put on them. And they've shown what a great ball club they are because they never folded in this game and they're not going to. If anybody's playing with house money, it's Queensboro. Yeah, this game will come down to the buzzer either way. If, if, uh, if Queensboro wins it, it certainly will. So 1.25 to go. 11 on the shot clock. Holford directing traffic. He's telling everybody where he wants them to stand. Well, they have 125 on the clock now. There's a minute 25. 11 Aub to shoot. Aubrey looking to get it in. And the pass. Loose ball. And that'll be a tie up. And it goes to Hostos with 122 remaining. Well, pass was a little too long for Abunse. Possession to the Caymans. <laughs> Nothing else to be said. Brown inbounding, and now some pressure from Queensboro. Some slight pressure, and it's Hodge. Brown, they get it across, and it's a turnover. Queensboro ball with 113 to go. Shaky pass made from the backcourt. Now OJ is inbounding, about three feet away from Jody King. And instead, it'll be Aubrey inbounding. Yeah, you better let a better inbounder take yeah. charge of that. It's Singleton with the ball. 70 seconds left. Singleton being guarded by Brown. Singleton to Aubrey. One minute to play. Aubrey to Bridie. You're down to 15 on the shot clock. Have to worry about a five second. Here's Aubrey. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Aubrey makes his move in the lane. And it went that off his knee. Off him, yes. Hostos ball with 44 and 3, 10 seconds remaining. The ball went off his foreleg and went out of bounds. And Coachman will be inbounding now. Queensboro was pressing. 35 on the shot clock, 44 in the game. Yeah, nine Th seconds between the game clock and the shot clock, and here's Hodge. This could be the game, the way it's going to line up. And now there's a bit of a mistake, because now there's seven seconds between the game clock and the shot clock, so the refs will have to work it out with the clock. Wow, what a ball game tonight at BMCC, the Borough of Manhattan Community College, down here on close to Wall Street. Now they say 31 on the shot clock, not 33. All right, uh, Holford's trying to establish his players out there in terms of positioning, because this is going to mean everything in terms of where you are in pickup coverage. 40.3 seconds remaining in regulation time. And there's a timeout called timeout. by Jody King. 
He's going to talk about breaking the press. Great battle tonight here at BMCC, and it's all come down to these final 40 seconds to see who will go on to the CUNY tournament title game on Friday night here. The host school, the Borough of Manhattan, by the way, has a chance to make it to the final. They'll be playing Bronx. Bronx has had a lock on the uh, on the CUNY the last couple of years, David. They've done very well, Bronx Community College. Bronx was third in CUNY this year. Most hosts, of course, was number one, but they're tied at 54 with 40 seconds to play against the Queen's Row team that had a sub-500 record in the QE this year. It'll be interesting, too, because younger Kelly will come in here and play against his father to, <laughs> to move yeah. on to the final. Steve Kelly's son is coaching Bronx. Here comes Hostos. And here we go, 37 seconds to go in the game. In regulation, I should say. And here's Coachman being guarded by Benjamin. Benjamin's got to make sure not to foul. It's Coachman. Coachman to the basket and he puts it in off glass. Hostos goes up 56 54. 23 and 6 10 seconds remaining. There is a proven scorer on the year and in his career. And Hostos took charge and he was not to be denied, but there's still time on the clock for Queensboro to get even or even move ahead if somebody fouls. A lot of time, a lot of time. Or if they shoot the three, right. Maybe if they get uh, John Peloso a look from downtown. I don't think you shoot a three in this situation unless you absolutely have to, but you want to get it to the basket. Sir. I think another issue that they have to think about, you always have to think ahead as a coach. If they go to overtime, they have a few guys in foul trouble. They'd be in danger. And when you're the underdog, you like it to come down to one play instead of spread out over a period of time, fewer possessions. And here's something, would you hold to the final shot of the half? Or would you go fast in case you miss? All to be determined. I say, I think with this younger team, you gotta get a shot up the best one you can and let the chips fall where they may. If you can't play defense after that, well, that's how it goes. Yeah, but you gotta tie this game right now. Still have uh, about 23 seconds, so that's a lot of time. That that's not. Let's work it down and play for one. So the five Tigers on the court for the final 23 seconds. You have Ojugbele, you have Bridie, you have Abunse, you have Singleton, and then you have to. Look at where they're going to bring this ball up yeah. from, too. It's going to be from the backcourt. They have to get all the way up the court, so that's another determining and factor. Fifth, Go ahead. And the fifth guy on the court, John Peloso, the right. three-point threat, but he can't create his own shot, remember. He's more of a catch-and-shoot guy. And now we have another timeout. Yeah, there's a question of whether Holford wants Peloso out there to put the thought in Hostos' mind. At least, you know, here's our three-point shooter, but there's so many ways this final 23 seconds can be played. Yes. And, and, and the, one of the determining factors right now is where this ball is going to be taken up from and how good a shot you're going to be able to manage. Remember, Hostos lost last year in the CUNY championship game. They lost with 11 seconds to go. Now they're hoping to win on the final possession. Those, those are always crushing blows, and you know, sometimes you have to endure them to win a title or win the championship the year after or the year after that. In this case, you only have another year to do it. 23 and 6, 10 seconds to go. It's Bridey, and now it begins. Postos will not press. Bridey walks it up. 15 seconds to go. Queensboro can tie or take the lead. Singleton. For the tie, throws up a wild one and he's fouled. Ah. He's fouled and nearly put it in with nine and four, 10 seconds to go. Boy, they just won't let up on the uh, anxiety and the tension in this building. That now they're gonna have to make some very important free throws here. He almost put that one in. Yeah. Circus shot. They have to make the biggest free throws of the year for Queensboro right here. I don't want to put pressure on the young man. Of his but, life, but ah. no pressure. Ah. 
Well, he can't hear us until afterwards anyway, so don't worry, Joe. Well, if he misses, you're going right after the foul, of course. So you would not waste any time trying to go for this None deal. at all. All right. You either just get the ball in your hands or just grab somebody. Two shots. The first one is good. 56-55. Ah. And we'll see if the young man does have ice water in his veins. <laughs> to tie. Misses a second. Loose ball, Queensboro can win it here. They get the rebound with six and nine, 10 seconds to go. Did you ever hear of the game that wouldn't end? <laughs> That's this one right here. That's if we go to overtime. Tigers. All right, David, what do you do here now? What do you what well, what do you, you look for here? Well, now you don't necessarily need Peloso for three because the two wins it, although you could put him on the court just to spread things out a bit. And they did leave themselves enough time on the clock to make this happen. They didn't go right down to the final seconds. That is correct. So we're correct. My, my idea is try to get the ball to Brighty because Brighty is one of the players who's out there who can make up a shot. And if there's something you want right now is maybe have a shot made up so yeah. you can get fouled or something. Well, you know Coach Holford will write up a good play and Jody King will put in his best defense. And also look for Joseph Turner. He's one with ice water in his veins. He can look to shoot and Chris Aubrey's got some scoring talent too. Well, this is one I said, win or lose, they're going to be looking oh, back God. on uh, Queensboro with a lot of pride the way they played this game. I mean, there's no doubt about that. We'll talk about pride later. The game is on the line right now. Yes. Hostos 56, Queensboro 55. Six and nine, ten seconds to go. And you mentioned that to Coach Olford about yeah. pride, and he's going to say, we wanted to win that game. Can you imagine him after this game? The game <laughs> was up by 15. And he'll go back and he'll reassess things, but here it is right the now. Five on the card. Yep. Aubrey Ojugbele, Bridey, Chateau. You could even watch an alley oop. That would be something. And I believe Singleton, I can't see from here. And the nosebleeds. <laughs> Looking to get it in. It is Singleton. And Aubrey calls the Tigers' final timeout. Six, nine, ten seconds. Excellent defense by Hostos. Yeah, sometimes you want to see where that defense is aligned, and then you'll get another timeout, and you'll try to work off that a little bit. Six point nine seconds remaining. And I also wonder, is Queensboro going to write up a different play now? Or, or is Hostos going to come out in a different defense than just what worked for them? If, 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 if. What a game. You're just happy you're not a coach. We've been saying if for about three or four minutes, about <laughs> 10 minutes. So here it is right here. We're going to see it in another 6.9 seconds, and that will be it. And then all these questions will be answered. wins this we'll have to come back and play another big game uh -huh. to win the championship to oh, yeah. Friday night. Oh by the way right. So would you change up the defense if you were hostos? I don't know what I do. I, <laughs> I know I would uh, I know I'd go with whatever I do and let uh, make Queensboro beat me. I mean, it's only a one-point game, so Queensboro can win the game right here. Right, and they don't need a three to do it. No. No, uh, you know, at this point, David, you just have to go with whatever you do, and if it's not good enough, you lose the game. <laughs> now, you know, you know they're going to be all over that inside. They're not going to allow the ball to be in, in, inbounded in there. So well, that's why I say they might give it out to Bridie, number 15. Let's see. They have Ojugbele and Chateau standing right by the basket. Aubrey's inbounding. He gets it to Singleton. Singleton. Blocking foul is called. Singleton oh, will go man. to the line for two. Oh, man. Four and four, ten seconds to go, and Singleton can tie and take the lead. Wow, the foul was on the big man. 
Oh, these are these are tough free throws too. So these are not gimmies. No pressure. 4.4 seconds to go. Singleton misses the first. So turns to the nah, you know, there's a taciturn oh, feeling. Man. And another timeout. And, and Coach Holford does not look at the free throw shooter in that case. He walks away and he just lets the kid settle himself down. You just can't look at him and you got to stay away from him. How about Jody King calling a timeout before Singleton shoots the second? Make him think about it a little more. And Hostos could also be drawing up a final play in the huddle right now because if he makes, they don't necessarily have to call a timeout right afterwards. They no, can they push don't. and win. And here's what you have to do. You have to go over there. You have to talk about everything but this free throw. <laughs> you got to talk about what happens we if gotta, you miss a free we gotta throw. We got to play defense. We got to play defense. We got to play defense. If you miss a free throw, you have to foul. If you make the free throw, you got to get back on defense. Yeah. And the railroad is coming through the building as you <laughs> So if there's not enough pressure on this young man right now. I guess there never will be. <laughs> and Singleton trying to tie the game with four and four ten seconds to go. They went to the guy who, by the way, who was their leading scorer on the year yeah. against Kearney. So they went to the right spot. Singleton second free throw is good. 56-56. Now Carl Benjamin goes in for defense for Queensboro. Ostos with the chance to win it though. They still have four and four ten seconds and nobody's guarding the inbound. Looking to get it in. Don't foul here. Don't it's Coachman. foul. Coachman with one. He's got to put it up for the win. No good. We're going no overtime. No basket. 56 56. We are going to overtime. The game speaks for itself, folks. You don't really have to add anything more. I, 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 here's what I'm going to add Robert Holford in 2001 2002 lost a game under those conditions to Staten Island when he was coaching at Mega Evers. He had a young man take the ball the length of the court, drive down right of the lane with a chance to win it for him, Edgar Evers. Banked it, did not go. The Dolphins got the rebound and collectively celebrated. So that had to be like a flashback for Holford, the opposite way to yeah. watch that kid go down there and miss that shot. <laughs> How about that? Finally uh, broke even after all these years. Well, you, you lose some and you win some. Yep. And I'll tell you, the way his team has played tonight, morally, and I know there were no moral victories. They won this game the way they played tonight, the way they've come in here and played tonight. No moral victories, especially in the playoffs, though, Joe. Now, that is true. You have to feel a lot better about this program, though, the way they oh, played. Man. What a great building block this game could be no matter what happens in the next five minutes. Believe me, there's some kids in the crowd. You know, David, there's some kids in the crowd tonight that might want to come to play at host, uh, Queensboro now after watching this. That's one thing as a coach you always bank on. We're going to sign off for a moment until overtime begins. All right. Beginning of overtime, 56-56. Chateau and White will jump at midcourt. I was saying there's a couple of more things that come into play tonight. We'll get to it. First, you have a lot of kids in the stands that might want to come and play basketball at Queensboro next year. Yeah. You never know. Secondly, you have a lot of coaches of the senior colleges that are looking at some of these young guys, and maybe they'll get an opportunity to play somewhere that they wouldn't get before. Queensboro ball to begin the overtime session, and it's Chris Aubrey with it. 
And they're going to try to shorten this overtime as much as they can. For instance, David, the coach at Lehman is two miles away from us, from <laughs> Lehman College. He's watching this game intently. I'm sure he came out to watch some of these host those yeah. players. They're in the Bronx. Maybe somebody from Queensboro caught his eye tonight. You don't know. Four on the shot clock. It's Benjamin. He's going to have to bail him out. Chateau's got to put it up. And the shot is too long, rebounded by Arthur Lowe. Cayman's looking to take the lead. Cayman's first possession of overtime. And I don't know if the shot clock was running. I have to stand up because we have no backs on our chairs and it's getting <laughs> a little uncomfortable, but you can't get uncomfortable with what's happened here tonight. This is, this is tremendous. Unless you're a coach. If you're Jody King over there, uh, that bagel you had at halftime's not sitting too well right now. <laughs> or before the game, I right. think. Uh, Who knows, maybe you had one at halftime? Maybe. 30 on the shot clock now as Dwayne Brighty takes a seat on the bench next to assistant coach Stephen Jones on Queensboro. Chad Coachman will inbound. And now it's Arthur Lowe being guarded by Singleton. Coachman. Coachman, no good. Offensive rebound and White is fouled with exactly four minutes to play. Well, we're going right back to Spin City. <laughs> White will go to the free throw line. There is OJ picking up his fifth foul. He will have to exit the game. He's that made really a great hurts. account for himself yeah. tonight, though. But that hurts Queensboro, though, for the final four minutes. And now he'll get the free coach's timeout on the foul out. So the team will have a word with Holford. So he's going to bring... Uh, He's going to bring a Bunce back in. 56 56. They will shift one big guy for another big guy in a Bunce. They both play the same type of game, basically. Now they have a Bunce and Chateauwin at the same time. OJ and a Bunce play practically the same type of game, the way they play. White trying to give the Caymans a lead. And does, it's 57-56. And here's where they came in the overtime. Back and forth. Looking to make both. And does. One of two things happen in this overtime. Either Hostos pulls away a little bit or this game stays very tight right down again to the final seconds. Chris Aubrey is going to milk the clock a bit. Singleton. Hostos in the zone. Mm -hmm. Good look at a shot and it's good. <laughs> Benjamin ties the game at 58. Really impressed with these guards of Queensboro the way they've taken the uh, the way they've taken things in their hands tonight. Things haven't been too shabby either. Hostos looking to take back the lead. Washington can't put it in off glass to tip in, no good. Loose ball. And a tie up. And it will stay with Hostos. We told you the former uh, Queensboro guard, Taquan Washington, and Kingsboro guard down there in the front row. He's probably really enjoying watching these young guys. Probably wishes he was out there. Sure it does. Coachman for three. Got it. Chad ah. Coachman from downtown. 61-58. Caymans with three minutes to play. Here's Chris Aubrey with the ball. Under three minutes to play. Holford shouting out instructions to his team. Hostos in the zone, as you mentioned on the last possession. Yeah, you just don't go right after a three here. You try to get the points back somehow. Tipped and a turnover. Cayman's ball. Now they don't want to rush anything. They'll slow it up. And here's Lowe to Brown. Jeremiah Brown. Down to 17 on the clock. Good look for Washington, and a charge is called. 
<laughs> With 2.22 remaining. You know, even if you're the best team in the conference at any time, if you've had the upper hand all year, you're going to get in ball games like this to try to win a title, and that's what's happened to Hostos tonight. They've had to really fight hard to put this game in the win column. Here's Aubrey facing the zone. It's a 3-2 zone now. And Singleton, they really closed in on him fast, and a foul is called, and that'll be two shots for Singleton. He's had a chance to give Queensboro the lead with four and four ten seconds to go. At least he tied the yeah, game, though. I was going to say he could have missed that second one, and we'd be going home right now. But <laughs> here is Singleton at the free throw line. These kids have shot under tremendous pressure at the free throw line. And Singleton's first is good, 61-59. Now, David, you know, you don't go after the three. You get the two points back, and then you work hard on the defensive end, and you try to edge ahead again. Two minutes and four seconds, an eternity in basketball. A single Tim looks to make both, and does. 61-60. Brown will inbound, and Queensboro is in a bit of a press. <laughs> and Hostos gets across half court. Yeah, no now problem. you got to get back, though. you got to get back, and you got to be in defensive position. It was low to Brown. Brown thought about a three. Aubrey was right on him. Brown. Bounce pass. Back outside. Brown with it. 17 on the shot clock. 145 to go in overtime. Keep in mind, Hostos has won a lot of close games this year and a lot of games this year. Yes. Coachman. Coachman loses the ball. Queensboro comes up with it. 90 seconds to go. They can take the lead. It's Aubrey with it, and they'll spread it out. 80 seconds to go. They can take it under one minute to play. Aubrey. He's standing around. He's going to wait to make his move. It's Singleton right back to Aubrey. 10 to go on the shot clock. Now he's got to make his move. It's Aubrey. Kick out. Benjamin for the lead. It goes in. Carl Benjamin from downtown. 63-61 Tigers. Hostos ball. 53 and 6, 10 seconds to go. Unbelievable the way the Tigers have played tonight. Unbelievable. They just have answered the call so many times. Now there are 53.6 seconds to go. Hey, one thing you don't want to do now, you don't want to start celebrating anything because you have nothing in the bag. And there was no timeout. So you got to play. Got to play. Yeah, Hostos ball. And no, I think they put some time on the clock because the clock, the clock kept running. But you stopped the clock with the made basket but and you know, a minute ago. 59 and 9, 10 seconds. Queensboro up by two. Let's keep in mind now that Hostos is a field goal away from tying this up. Just the two-pointer. field pointer. goal away from taking the lead too and, and then you have coachman out there just hit the three brown it's hostos it's coachman coachman brown in the corner brown down low now it's white underneath loose ball tipped that'll be a tie-up i believe they call a tie-up and it's queensboro ball Queensboro ball with 33 and 9, 10 seconds to go. And now, how long do you wait to foul if you're hostos, Joe? Uh, you have time. You have time. You want to, uh, there's 35 on the, uh, well, the 30, shot clock should be shot turned off. Shot clock's over. 33.9. You're going to make it as tough as you can on Queensboro and then say at about the 28 second mark, maybe you want to foul. And Chateau wouldn't be a bad one to foul. Now Aubrey with it, and he gets across half court. They're down to 23 seconds to play. And they foul him with 22 and one 10 second remaining. All right, make me a liar for six seconds, all right? <laughs> let's, uh, let's give credit to both clubs, boy. They have oh, really yeah. come in and given everybody a show tonight. But one of the great games in tournament history. This one could be taken by Queensboro. It is looking... Well, don't call it, it yet, Joe. Looking no like drinks. it might happen. It might. might. First free throw by Aubrey is good. 
David, when that three was connected on, you just had the feeling that this might be their night. This would make it a two-possession game. 22 and 110 seconds to go. Aubrey's second free throw is good. 65-61. And Osos Aubrey. has got to score, and they got to score fast. And it's low. And he misses. Queensboro ball. Aubrey. And Singleton is fouled with 13 and 7 seconds to go. Foul charge to number 21. Arthur second. And Aubrey was his name. Remember that song by Brett, Aubrey was her name? Aubrey is his name. Look at, the, look at what he's done in these final seconds. He hit the big three, didn't he? Aubrey hit the three. And he made the play Benjamin down. Benjamin hit the three that rolled around and in. Jody King calls timeout. His CUNY title hopes are 13 and 7, 10 seconds away from going down the toilet. But correct me if I'm wrong, did Aubrey have a three in there too? You may, if I remember the Benjamin yeah. one, yes. it was 61-60, rolling around and in. Unbelievable. Queensboro, 13 seconds away from one of the biggest upsets of all time. Well, you know, it's a state of mind, it's a state of accomplishment, it's a, it's a question of how long you hang in here with the top seed. And uh, they hung in here a long time with this Hostos club, and uh, Hostos just never able to put them away to this point. Now, this game's not over yet, by the way. It's not over. Sixty-five, sixty-one in favor of the guest, and that means that they're the lower seed. That's why they're the guest. They're the bottom seed coming into this round, right? Queensboro, Queensboro the, was three and five in CUNY games. Hostos was eight and zero. Oh. So they were the bottom seed coming yep, into this. They beat Queensboro by thirty-six the first time, by thirty-eight the second. This free throw is good. Sixty-six, sixty-one. Queensboro defense, gotta get back. We'll see, 13 and seven, 10 second and it's good, 67-61. Hostos needs two threes. But hadn't, he was out of bounds. Ball to Queensboro. Well, all you can say is Hostos is getting Hostos tonight by a former coach of Hostos. How sweet do you think this is for Robert Holford? How sweet do you think this is for the Queensboro program? That's a great win. It's Queensboro great win. with one of the biggest upsets in CUNY history. And they will play in the championship game Friday night. For Joe Massey, this is David Russell. The Tigers win it 67-61. And and 22, Jeremiah Brown had 18 points. For the one, Chad Coachman, a game high of 25 points. For the Tigers, there was 22 to 31 from the line. The top scorers tonight, for the one, Troy Simpson had 9 points. For the 12, Joseph Turner had 10. And number 23, Thea O.J. had a team high of 12 points.